In today's video, we're going to plunge into the mesmerizing world of early radio technology through the assembly and analysis of a DIY spark gap transmitter. The circuit itself is extremely simple. When the supply voltage is applied, the charge circuit R1 and C1 charge up until the breakdown voltage of the spark gap is reached. The breakdown of the spark gap allows for energy to flow into the LC resonant tank circuit, which in turn generates a strongly damped signal on the desired resonant frequency. A quick functional test confirms that the circuit operates as intended. Controlling the triggering frequency is an important feature as it directly relates to the pitch of the tone received in an AM receiver. A spark gap transmitter obviously requires a spark gap. Its main purpose is to dump the accumulated charge from C1 into the tank circuit at a controlled rate. The breakdown voltage of air is around 3 kilovolts per millimeter. While this rule of thumb is certainly precise enough for this experiment, I would just like to point out that in reality the exact breakdown voltage depends on a lot of parameters such as temperature, humidity and the exact gas mixture. Let's listen to what the signal sounds like on an AM receiver. Capturing the generated waveform with an oscilloscope confirms the generation of a signal with a frequency of around 3 MHz. The amplitude envelope of the generated signal follows a quick exponential decay. The cycle duration and the actual frequency of oscillation can also be read directly from the oscilloscope screen. Let's take a look at the spectrum of the output waveform. At first glance it appears that there is only a single peak at a center frequency of the expected 3 MHz. Even though this peak is extremely wide, there seems to be nothing out of the ordinary. However, increasing the span paints a completely different picture. While the 3 MHz peak is certainly the strongest, there now appears a second peak at around 10 MHz as well. The source of this design flaw is as in many cases this nasty thing called reality. The problem is that the moment the spark gap is triggered, C1 is fully charged and C2 is empty. Initially, the fully charged C1 alone interacts with L1, with C2's contribution to the oscillation delayed. Due to the extremely large bandwidth of this transmitter and certain legal restrictions, this transmitter isn't good for anything other than demonstrations anyway. So therefore I have no intentions of fixing this design flaw. 